the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. And the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. And when you have that passage, I want you to respond by saying, I got it. If you don't, please say, hold up. All right. Acts chapter 3. A wonderful text, a familiar one. Um, that fifth book of the, the New Testament, book of Acts. Please rest on your feet, if you will, beginning at verse number 1. We'll be reading today from a New King James Version of the Holy Greek text says these words. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go to, into the temple asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging uh, alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him you may be seated in the presence of the living God then Peter said silver and gold I do not have but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk we dealt with mess and ministry, first part, mind and ministry, second part. And to close this out before our church anniversary, I want to talk about miracles and ministry. Mess and ministry, mind and ministry, miracles and ministry. If you're a Bible reader, then you understand very clearly that the biblical record is full of miracles. It is full of miracles, and many of these miracles are familiar to us, especially if you've been in church for some time. They are familiar because our parents read them to us when we were little children. They are familiar to us because our Sunday school teachers ensured uh, that we understood their meaning. Uh, they are familiar to us because movies have been made about the miracle stories of Scripture. Preachers throughout the years have descriptively presented to us these wonderful miracle narratives about how God moved despite seemingly impossible conditions. I don't know about you, but reading these stories over the years and hearing them spoken of in pulpits throughout this country have led me to still believe in miracles. I'm at the point in my life where I don't care what anybody says or what anybody else thinks. I still believe in miracles. I believe in miracles, y'all. I believe in miracles because I read about a nation of people that were fleeing captivity. And on their journey towards liberation, they did not know where they were going. But in the Exodus account, we see that a pillar of cloud guided them by the day and a flame of fire guided them by the 
the night. Brothers and sisters, that was a miracle. And I don't care what anybody else says. I still believe in miracles despite the conditions that we see. I still believe in miracles. The interesting part about this particular story was that this pillar of cloud and this flame of fire that guided them by night took them literally to a dead end. It took them to a big body of water that was known as the Red Sea that literally blocked their procession from one place over to the other side. It was a crazy situation because Pharaoh's army was viciously following them and they were concerned about the situation. Nonetheless, God was not in the text finished doing miracles. The text tells us that Moses raised his staff and the Red Sea parted so that the children of Israel could proceed to the other side. And when they got to the other side, they looked back behind them and found that the Red Sea had drowned Pharaoh's army. I read this story and I came to the conclusion that this story is an example of a miracle. Uh, I still believe in miracles. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what conditions face us in this life. I still believe in miracles because I read a story about three Hebrew boys. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the story story says that King Nebuchadnezzar ordered them to bow down and worship the idols that were made. And if they chose not to worship, they would be thrown into a fiery furnace. But I love how these three boys responded to this king when he made this demand of them. They said, we have no need to answer you in this matter because our God is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace. But even even if God decides not to deliver us from this furnace, uh, we still refuse to bow down and worship this image. The text is interesting because it says that this comment that they made to the king infuriated him. It infuriated him to the point where he said, turn up the fiery furnace seven times the normal heat. It was turned up so hot that scripture teaches us that the men that went to throw the young boys into the fiery furnace were consumed by the fire that came up out of it. Uh, this was an astonishing sequence of events because the king went to see what happened and uh, he says, I'm confused. I'm, I'm messed up. Uh, the, the fiery furnace has turned up seven times the normal heat, but I'm looking inside and these young men are not burning. And by the way, I thought we threw three men into the fire, but, but I see four in there and one of them looks like the son of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were delivered from the fiery furnace. And when I read this, I came to the conclusion that this was an example of a miracle. I don't care what anybody says. I still believe in miracles. I don't care what the situation uh, that comes up in our life presents to us. I still believe that we serve a God of miracles. There was a man in Jerusalem, and he was lying by the pool of Bethesda and the text tells us that all the invalids of the community were there the the blind were there and the lame were there and the paralyzed were there and scripture teaches us that this man had been there for 38 years and Jesus saw this man realized he had been there for that long he asked him do you want to be made whole the man responded to Jesus by saying that I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And when I try to get in there by myself, someone else steps in before me. And Jesus tells him these simple words. He says, get up, get your bed and walk. And the gospel according to John chapter number five tells us that this man was immediately healed. He took his bed and he walked. I read this story in John chapter five and came to the conclusion that this is an example of a miracle. I still believe in miracles. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what situations come in our lives. I still believe in miracles because I read about a man who was going all over the place teaching in the 
synagogues. In fact, one day, the gospel according to Luke chapter 4 tells us that he goes in, he picks up the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and says these words, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set at liberty those who have been bound and to preach uh, the year of the Lord's favor. And I read about this man some more who went all over the region. There was a group of about 5,000 folk that did not have anything to eat, but there was a little boy who had a couple of catfish nuggets and five biscuits. Uh, this man uh, was able to multiply that meal and feed all the 5,000. I read about this man. I read about this man who went all over the region. They said it was a brother, a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus, and he was sitting on the side of the road begging when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming to town. And as Jesus approached where he was, this blind man shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It was an interesting sequence of events because the people that were around him told him, be quiet, shut up, don't bother Jesus, leave him alone. But the blind man ignored what the people were saying to him and he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The old preacher used to say the more they told him to shut up, the louder he got. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus called the man to come to him. He said, what do you want for me to do? The man said, I want my sight to come back. Jesus told him, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately his sight was restored. I read these stories in the Bible and I came to the conclusion that they are miracles. I still believe in miracles. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what situation comes in our lives. I still believe because because folk didn't like this man named Jesus. Folk didn't like the fact that he performed miracles on the Sabbath. Folk did not like that he uh, challenged the religious establishment. Folk didn't like the fact that he hung out with prostitutes and tax collectors and sinners. Uh, in fact, they decided to bring charges against this man, Jesus, and had him crucified. And according to the biblical account, he was killed on a Friday afternoon. But uh, I still still believe in miracles. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what the situation is in front of us because they said he stayed in that grave on Friday and he stayed in that grave Friday night and he stayed in that grave Saturday morning and he stayed in that grave Saturday afternoon. He stayed in that grave on Saturday evening. But the old preacher used to say early Sunday morning, he got it with all power in his hand. Uh, and because he got up with all power in his hands, the greatest miracle was able to take place. Oh, you must have thought that the greatest miracle was him getting up from the grave. You must have thought that the greatest miracle was him resurrecting on Sunday morning. But that's not the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle was the fact that because of his resurrection, he saved me. The greatest miracle wasn't him getting up. The greatest miracle was the fact that you got saved by his redeeming grace. Uh, oh, did I tell you I believe in miracles? I still believe in miracles. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what the situation is. I believe in miracles because he was able to save a wretch undone like me. I still believe in miracles because he was able to save a low down sinner like me. I still believe in miracles because he was able able to justify a mess like me. I still believe in miracles because he was able to redeem a project like me. I still believe in miracles because he was able to restore a broken vessel like me. I still believe in miracles because he was able to wash up a dirty man like me. I still believe in miracles and I'm just crazy enough to believe that God is still working miracles. God is still doing miracles. God is still establishing miracles. God is still performing miracles. In fact, when I look at the folk in the congregation on this Sunday morning, you may be looking at me strange, but guess what? You're a walking miracle. I'm looking at some talking miracles. I'm looking at some shouting miracles. Somebody ought to be able to testify I shouldn't be here. I should be dead, sleeping in my grave. But guess what? God worked a miracle in my life. Do I have any witnesses in the building that ought to say I should be in the pit of hell? I should have received condemnation, but God 
came in and turned my life around. I'm a walking, talking, and living miracles. Is anybody in here that knows what I'm talking about? I should have lost my mind a long time ago, but God spoke a word to my spirit, and in the midst of turmoil in my soul, he came in my life and said, peace be still. He brought joy to my spirit. He brought warmth to my heart. He gave me a song on my lips. And now I'm here today saying my mind is stayed on him. Why? Because I'm a walking, talking, living miracle. I don't care what nobody says. I still believe in miracles. I, I got to talk about this thing because... I believe that when the church gets mission minded and when the church begins to focus on the message and ministry of Jesus the Christ, we open ourselves up uh, uh, for miracles. Um, I can't tell you how I know this. I know this. I know this because I've seen when ministry meets people. I've seen when the gospel of Jesus Christ meets people. Uh, we celebrated on today because uh, I saw 12 folk get baptized. I've, I've seen drug addicts quit. I've seen alcoholics put the liquor bottle down. I've seen righteous folk come together, touch, and agree and pray that somebody's body be healed. And in the name of Jesus, God restores their health. I know that miracles can happen when Jesus is at the center. And that's because miracles and miracles ministry go hand in hand uh, miracles and the message of Jesus Christ go hand in hand can I go to Bible country with you this morning Acts chapter 3 opens with with Peter and John making their way to the temple for 3 p.m. prayer the text tells us very clearly that there was a man there uh, that was lame from birth being carried to the temple. And the text says that every day he was carried and laid at the gate called Beautiful for the sole purpose of him being able to ask for alms for all those who entered into the temple. Now understand that this was not an uncommon practice for the least in society because it is very clear that they could not take care of themselves. So they were allowed to beg for a living and to depend on the piety and kindness of other people for their survival. This man sees Peter and John coming into the temple and immediately he asks them for alms. But Luke tells us that when the man asked, Peter looked intently at him and said these words look at us when the man looked at them he was still expecting to receive some alms from them but Peter said to him these famous words he says uh, uh silver and gold I, I don't have but, but but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk the Bible says that, that Peter took the man by the right hand, raised him up, and immediately his ankles and his feet were made strong. Can I tell you I love this story? I love this story because I still believe in miracles. I don't care what nobody else says. I don't care what condition we have to face. I still believe in miracles. And I love this story because it is a miracle story. But not only is it a miracle story, it is a miracle story that takes place in church. This miracle does not take place at the Jewish community center. This miracle does not take place in downtown Jerusalem. This miracle does not take place on the side of the road. This miracle happens when people are on their way to church with the right attitude. Peter and John, according to verses 1 and 2, are on their way to church at the 3 p.m. hour to pray. And with their minds focused on the Lord, they ended up being a part of a miracle. And they were able to be a part of a miracle because their minds were not focused on mess. 
their minds were not focused on who was wearing what in the temple. Their, their minds were not focused on who they didn't like and who they did not want to see. Their, their minds were not focused on uh, the Sanhedrin council. They came to church at 3 p.m. to pray because their minds were focused on the Lord. And I believe what they really did was embody the words of the old church which simply said this. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus oh and what a wonderful church would be what a wonderful place the church would be if the, the people of God collectively had that mindset that I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus I didn't come to church to be a part of no mess I didn't come to church to be a part of no drama I didn't come to church to be a part of stuff that does not matter I came to church with my mind stayed on Jesus so I'm I'm walking and talking with my mind stayed on Jesus I'm singing and praying with my mind stayed on Jesus and as I read this text I'm just crazy enough to believe that by reading about this miracle that happened at the church house it can give us some insight on how miracles and ministry can go together uh, can I talk about this the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse number 2, it says there was a lame man. But the interesting part about him being lame is that the scripture is specific in that he was lame from birth. He was not just lame. He was lame out of his mother's womb. Uh, this is interesting uh, because in my study of scripture over the years, I have discovered that oftentimes when scripture is specific in its designations, there is usually an understanding that is associated with it. And this case is no different. When the text says that he was lame from birth, it is suggesting that lameness is all he knew. Uh, uh. It is suggesting that he never experienced walking. Uh, it's saying that he was never able to run. He never experienced putting one step in front of the other. In other words, because he was lame from birth, what the text is saying is that permanency was associated with his condition. In other words, his lameness was a condition that was, is, and always will be. That's why Luke records this man at the gate of the temple called Beautiful. It says that he was there every day begging because he and the people of his community had come to grips with the fact that this was this man's condition he was lame this is the way he was this is the way he is this is the way he always would be but the powerful thing is that while he came to church to beg for money he ended up leaving with the part of him changed that he thought would always be with him he came to church to get a financial blessing, but he left with what he thought was a permanent condition being completely removed from his life. And it all happened because two men went to church with a mind to pray. And that's because miracles and ministry go hand in hand. Because when I come to church with the right attitude, there's no telling what God can do in the sanctuary. When I come to church, with the right mindset there's no telling what God can do for somebody uh, uh, the Bible says when they were in the upper room it says they were in uh, all on one accord and when they were all on one accord that's when the Holy Ghost came because it was a group of people that were together with the right can, can, can I talk to you real quick? This thing blesses me. This thing blesses me. It, it blesses me because some of us in the building, we have been dealing with some conditions that have been seemingly permanent in our lives. 
we've been dealing with some stuff uh, that feels like it's a part of us uh, it's gonna be a part of us and it ain't going anywhere and we've gotten to the point where we have accepted that this is how things are going to be it's been this way it is this way it will always be be this way uh, but I'm here on this Sunday morning able uh, to shout hallelujah because when miracles and ministry comes together there are things that are seemingly permanent that will be made loose uh, uh, in other words can I talk to you child of God I don't care how long you've been dealing with your situation uh, I don't care how long you've been dealing with your circumstance God is still able to handle it I don't care how strong that bind has been in your life and I don't care how strong the chains have come around you my Bible says now unto him who is able so I don't care if the situation seems strong I don't care if the addiction seems too difficult I don't care if the problem seems too too difficult too hard my Bible says that God is still able to perform miracles and God is still performing miracles in 2014 miracles weren't just in the Bible God is still doing some miracles in your life he's still doing some miracles in my life things that I thought could not change are changing through the miracle working power of Jesus the Christ you ought to look at somebody and tell them I'm looking for a miracle I'm expecting a miracle I'm searching for a miracle because I still believe in miracles <laughs> I don't care what nobody says I don't care what conditions come in my way I still believe in miracles I still believe God is performing miracles can, can I tell you what the church needs to do the church needs to be mindful of what it has sometimes folk come to church expecting the church to give them what they want now 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 yes I I believe the church is is supposed to do its best to supply the needs of the people I, I, I believe with all my heart that 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 the church is supposed to best represent Jehovah Jireh the one who provides however there is something that the church has that's more important than the benevolence fund that, that, there's something that the that the church has uh, that's more important than school supplies for the kids oh uh, there's something that the church has that's more important than the scholarships oh uh, there's something that the church has uh, that's more important than providing a place for your children to come uh, there's something that the church has that's more important than the food pantry uh, there's something that the church has that's more important uh, than the clothing station uh, there is something that the church has that, that Peter when he said the man said to the man he said I need you to look at me he says I don't have any silver or gold however what I do have is something that I can give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk oh somebody's missing this thing uh, uh, I love this part of the text because Peter was telling the man look brother I don't have any money to give you he says I don't have anything material to put in your hands however what I do have for you is something that's more valuable than money what what I do have for you is something that's more valuable than material things what I have for you is something that you can't purchase on your own because it was purchased on a hill called Calvary through the through the blood of the lamb he said I got the ministry of Jesus Christ and because I've got the ministry of Jesus Christ he says I got a miracle that's waiting for you 
We family, right? Can, can I talk to you? We cool? Uh, the truth of the matter is, I don't need fame or fortune. I don't need riches untold. <laughs> I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody in the building? Huh. Somebody ought to touch yourself and say, it's not about Versace. <laughs> it's not about Gucci. It's not about Louis Vuitton. It's not about the Benjamins. It's not about Lexus. It's not about Mercedes. It's not about BMW. It's not about Audi. When I look back over my life and I begin to think things over, I've come to the conclusion that as long as I've got Jesus, everything is going to be all right. Do I have a witness in the building? As long as I got the lily of the valley, as long as I got the bright and morning star, as long as I got Mary's baby, as long as I got the prince of peace, as long as I've got the king of kings, as long as I got the lord of lords, as long as I got the everlasting father, I know everything is going to be all right. I'd rather have Jesus. Uh, uh, uh. I'm about done. I'm about done. Uh, somebody ought to just tell the Lord, I'd rather have Jesus. If you don't give me anything else, as long as I've got Jesus, I know everything is going to be all right. <laughs> Heard a songwriter say, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. See, you got to understand what, what, what Peter was telling this man. Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, this is critical because Peter is telling the man that the healing that's about to come over your body is not coming from human hands. Uh, he says that the healing that's about to touch your ankles and the healing that's about to touch your feet it's not coming from me and it's not coming from john he says i'm calling on the name of jesus christ of nazareth because in that day a person's name was an extension of that person's being and personality so when peter says in the name of jesus christ he was in essence saying that i am aware of a name that has the power and the authority to heal you of what you believe is a permanent condition uh, so peter was saying i walked with this man i talked with this man and i know what he's capable of so i'm calling on a name that i know has the authority to do for you what you can't do for yourself he says i walked with this man and i talked with this man he says i was there when they called him into the room and lazarus had been dead for four days and he said lazarus get up i was there for the resurrection he said i was there when we were walking through the crowds and and there was a woman with an issue of blood who was on her knees trying to make her way through the crowd and she said if i could just touch the hem of his garment everything was going to be all right uh, he said i was there when folk were blinded they were now able to see he says so i'm calling on that name uh can i can i, can I I'm not calling on Abraham. I'm not calling on Isaac. I'm not calling on Jacob. I'm not calling on Gideon. I'm not calling on Samson. I'm not calling on David. I'm not calling on Solomon. I'm not calling on Joshua. I'm not calling on Moses. I'm not calling on Isaiah. Isaiah. I'm not calling on Ezekiel. I'm not calling on Daniel. I'm not calling on Hosea. I'm not calling on Joel. I'm not calling on Amos. I'm not calling on Obadiah. I'm not calling on Nahum. I'm not calling on Habakkuk. I'm not calling on Zephaniah. I'm not talking on Haggai. I'm not calling on Malachi. I'm calling on the name of... Can I tell you why? Because there's power, power, wonder-working power, 
in the name of Jesus. Do I have a witness in the building? Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's joy in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, at the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do I have a witness in the building? There is a name that I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name I know. Oh, 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 how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. I love him because he first loved me. Has anybody ever called on the name Jesus? Has anybody ever tried the name Jesus? Do you know anything about Jesus? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. And the Bible says that when the man's ankles and his feet were healed, he started walking. He started leaping and he started praising God. And the reason he started leaping and walking and praising God was because he just had an encounter with the name, with the name of Jesus. And he realized what just happened to him. So he had no choice but to leap and dance. He had no choice but to jump and shout because I just met a man from Galilee who healed me of something I thought I'd be stuck with forever. So at the name of Jesus, if you came in here with something that you think can't go away, there's power. Oh, there's power. There's power. There's power. That's miracles and ministry coming together at the name of Jesus. Oh, can I talk to you for just a second? Oh, I, I can't deal with dead names. That's why you ought not put your faith in Corey Jones. Because if the Lord doesn't come back, Corey Jones is going to one day die. And that's why I don't put my faith in your name. Because if the Lord doesn't come back, you're going to eventually die. Oh, I ain't got no problems with my Buddhist brothers and sisters. But I don't put my faith in Buddha. Because Buddha died. Oh, I ain't got no problem with my Confucian brothers and sisters. But guess what? Confucius died. I love what my brothers from Islam do for the community. But I can't put my faith in Muhammad. Because Muhammad died. But if you ask me who I put my faith in. I put my faith in a man named Jesus. Because yes, he died on Friday. But guess what early? On Sunday morning, he said, I'm standing up with all power. And I'm declaring that I live. And because he lives, I can face my tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fears are gone. Because I know who holds my future. And life is what? The living just.
something about the name Jesus. Uh, it's the sweetest name I know. Uh, there's something about the name Jesus uh, that calms my spirit, that gives me joy in my soul. It's something about the name Jesus. Uh, 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 uh. Next Sunday, it's church anniversary. And I ain't preaching. So while I'm here, and I got two more weeks before I preach to you again, I might as well holler one good time when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul 